Hello and welcome to my channel. So I'm just getting ready to mix up a batch of seed starting mix. Uh, we are getting towards the end of January here in Zone 3, Saskatchewan, Canada. And I am just getting ready to plant my first round of seeds for my outdoor garden this spring. So I'm going to be using these ingredients here to make a very basic seed starting mix. But I also like to sterilize it to avoid getting any uh, fungus gnats or, or bugs or anything into the house because that can be very devastating and very annoying uh, once you start your seeds indoors if you get a, a bad uh, bug infestation. So I'm going to mix them up here, show you uh, my measurements and then show you how I sterilize my seed starting mix. So there's nothing very special about my seed starting mix recipe if you go on YouTube like I do. <laughs> and research uh, you know, a seed starting mix that you can make yourself. Uh, usually the basic components of it are some peat moss or coconut core mixed with some vermiculite and perlite or one or the other. So I always purchase these in bulk because I use them in my indoor plant soil. I use peat moss in you know, my potting soil mix, my seed starting mix. Um, I add it to my containers out in the garden and wherever I can, wherever I can uh, place it in the dirt to help for soil retention and to just kind of loosen up the soil. So I always buy a bale of this, maybe even two by the time summer hits uh, to use for my gardening. And it is very affordable. This bale here, it's like an 85 liter bale of peat moss. It's Canadian sphagnum peat moss. And I've done you know, a lot of research on peat moss because you know, there is a lot of concern that um, it's a non-renewable resource. Uh, this comes from Canada. We have a, I guess, a huge amount of um, sphagnum moss beds in our country here. Only about, I don't know, 20%, less than 20% are being harvested um, for this sphagnum moss, it is a manageable, renewable resource um, from what I've learned. So that's my research. I always tell people to do your own research, make your own decision as to whether you want to use sphagnum peat moss in your garden. Uh, I find coconut core more expensive and last year I bought some of those bricks and it didn't matter how much water I added to them, they would not break down and I ended up with these big chunks of coconut core that I could not get to uh, absorb moisture. It was a very painful process. So I'm back to my peat moss. I usually go with a basic measurement of two to one, which is two parts peat moss to one part vermiculite or perlite. So I can mix up small batches very easily in a container like this and it's very easy to sterilize it. So I'm going to Start off by mixing up two parts peat moss to one part of the perlite vermiculite combination. So I have some uh, almost empty bags of perlite and vermiculite here. I'm just going to start off by pouring them into here. And I do recommend wearing a mask or, you know, just kind of letting the dust settle a little bit before you start breathing, especially if you're doing this, you know, in, indoors. I'm out in the garage right now. I'm going to use mostly perlite in this mixture. So here's how much vermiculite and perlite I got in here. So I'm basically going to just add double the amount of peat moss now and mix it up. So these large bales of peat moss are also very compact. So it is a bit of a chore to kind of break through it and scoop it out. This has got a nice little, does have a bit of moisture to it already. But something like this, you know, I can, I'm always worried about it having maybe some bugs or some fungus gnats or fungus gnat eggs in it. You don't know where it's been or if it's been fully sterilized. So this is why I like to do my own sterilization, just to be sure. And you can buy, you know, those bags of uh, seed starting mix for, you know, about eight to ten dollars, which, you know, isn't uh, super expensive. But I find that, you know, making my own over the long run and buying the sphagnum moss and having the perlite in bulk is 
quite e economical. Uh, a bale like this in Saskatoon and Saskatchewan is about $14, so that's not too bad. The perlite and the vermiculite were five dollars and or six dollars and seven dollars each for these three liter bags or six liter bags so we can get a lot of seed starting mix made out of that and when it comes time to potting up all my my seedlings into larger pots I will make the same mixture I'm making here just amend it with some you know some all-purpose fertilizer I thought about adding some of my worm castings that I just recently harvested just to add that little bit of uh, nutrition and fertilizer to, to my seed starting mix, but um, I have been keeping my vermicomposting bins outside during the summer, bring them in in the winter to the garage and I can see that there's fruit flies and who knows what else kind of bugs. And again, I don't want to bring any kind of that infestation into the house. So any of my homemade compost or worm castings that I have harvested on my own, I don't use them in the house. There'll be lots of chances to use all that in my outdoor containers this spring and summer when I get growing outdoors. So we see here now I've got about a two to one ratio of the vermiculite and perlite to the sphagnum moss. So I'm just gonna stir it all together and then we will add some boiling water. So as far as what I'm gonna be starting from seeds very soon, I'm gonna be starting with onions. Those are one of the uh, seeds that you should start fairly early, you know, 10 weeks prior to 10 to 12 weeks prior to your last frost date. And um, they should actually go out into your garden before your last frost date. So I'm hoping that I will be planting out my onions, you know, at the beginning of May. Here in Zone 3 Saskatchewan, our last frost date is about the third week of May, sometimes the end of May, depending on what kind of a spring you're having. So my plan is to have onions ready to go out into the garden uh, at the beginning of May. So before we get the boiling water added in here, it's good to just go through and really break down all those lumps that uh, you find in the peat moss. You want to get your soil as loose and airy as possible so those little seedlings don't have to struggle to push their roots down through. So when seedlings are first germinated, they don't need any nutrients in the soil to uh, germinate. They have that naturally within the seed. So that first period of time when they are germinating until they get to that, you know, two leaf stage, you really don't need to worry about having any nutrients into the soil. So what I'll be doing once, um, say my onions here get growing, I will just start fertilizing them with a you know a diluted liquid fertilizer probably like a fish emulsion or something like that so once you got this good and mixed up I think we are ready to add in the boiling water so I've just brought this to a full boil I'm hoping this is going to be enough or this amount of dirt if not a second kettle of boiled water might be required so basically I'm just going to pour that boiling hot water into this mixture just try to stir that in I know some people also do a method of putting the dirt in the oven and you know at a high temperature and kind of sterilizing it that way. That is another option. To me it just sounds a little dirty and messy. <laughs> so I like doing this method. And I do this for soil, you know, even for house plants if I buy a bag of 
potting soil for my indoor house plants. Um, I like to always uh, use a boiling water to kill off any bugs and it also you know gives that moisture that you need to add into the the mixture. So just to help retain that heat in there a little bit longer I'm going to put a lid on it here. Just let it cool off. I think I'm going to boil another uh, pot full of water just to top this up a little bit just so we have it moist enough and ready to set up in some of our little seedling containers. So of course you don't want to plant your seeds in this until the uh, soil has cooled down. It's quite hot right now and I am just mixing it up really good here. I think I'm going to add some more boiling water to it. So when you uh, get it moistened you want it to not be dripping but you want it to kind of hold together when you squeeze it. So just not quite enough moisture in there right now. I think another kettle full of boiling water will uh, do the trick here. Another thing you want to remember after you've moistened your seed starting mix or your potting mix that um, something I've learned from the past is you know you have all that moisture in there it's warm you put a lid on it and you leave it for a few days you come back and you might have some mold growing on your dirt so when you're storing it especially when it's uh, got a lot of moisture in it and it's um, hasn't fully cooled off just kind of keep your lid a little bit of a jar so there is some air getting into that container. So as you can see here now it's kind of holding together a little bit better. So I am just going to put that lid on here, hold in that heat as long as we can before we get it ready to set up in our containers. So once that seed starting mix has cooled off, I'll be ready to start filling up these containers and get some onion seeds going. So I hope that you found this video helpful and that you will try, you know, making your own DIY seed starting mix. It's super easy. It's very economical and just by adding, you know, a couple kettlefuls of boiling water to that mix, it'll just help hopefully control any bugs coming into your house and uh, not having to deal with that problem. So I hope you enjoyed this. Please hit the like button, leave a comment, and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos coming to the channel. And maybe there'll be an onion planting video coming soon. Thanks for watching. Happy gardening.